What's up? It's Chris from Rooker Films, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you this 2.5D photo effect. So once you're inside of Photoshop, you want to go ahead and find the quick selection tool, and you want to select the layer that is in the foreground. So in my example, this is this photographer. And once you've done that, you want to hold Command C and Command V, and this is gonna copy that layer without the background. Now, if we zoom in on this layer, you want to go ahead and you want to erase the parts of the background that was not removed within this masking phase. So we'll go to the eraser tool and in the eraser tool, we're going to make sure that the size is a comfortable size and we'll pull the hardness all the way up to 100%. Now I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to erase the background between the legs here. I'm going to shuffle up and I'm going to delete the background in between the arm here. Now on the edge of this coat, there's a little bit of fluff and it's going to take forever if we go through with the hardness up to 100%. So we're going to pull the hardness down to zero and we're just going to feather around the side of the coat. Now once you've done that, we can zoom back out. So we'll zoom out to 25%. We're going to turn the background layer back on and then holding command, we're going to press the thumbnail on layer one and that's going to bring up that mask one more time. Now you want to press your background layer, go up to select, modify, expand, and we want to make sure that this is up to 50 pixels. Press OK and we're going to go back into select, modify, and this time we're going to go into feather and we're going to change the feathering to 20. Now from here we want to go into edit, fill, and inside of fill we want to go ahead and we want to make sure that the content is set to content aware. Now the computer is going to go ahead and it's going to completely fill in that masked area. So there you go. The photographer has been removed from that photo. And if we toggle that on and off, you can see that we've got two different layers. One is the photographer and one is the background, but we need to go ahead and clean that up. So we're going to go to the clone stamp tool. We're going to make sure that the size is around 500. Now, as you can see, if I try to clean this up straight away, I'm greeted with this error message. So in order to do this effect, I need to hold down an option select a part of the image that I want to copy and then you want to go ahead and clean the video. The clone stamp tool basically copies one part of your image and pastes it onto another part of the image so be very careful where you're selecting but take your time make sure you get this right and do a good job of cleaning this up. Now once you've done this you're left with two layers you've got a clean background and you've got the isolated photographer. So from here you need to go ahead and you need to save this so we'll go up to file save as save this as a Photoshop document and make sure that you export the layers. Now we'll jump into Premiere, we'll import that image file, that PSD file, and when it imports, you're gonna be greeted by this message box. And inside of this message box, you want to change this from merge all layers to individual layers. This will import those as two different image layers. And now we can go ahead, select both of those images, select new sequence from clip, and you've created this brand new composition with those two images. Now from here, you want to go ahead and you want to put your foreground objects. So in my example, that's the photographer on video layer two, and you want to keep your background on video layer one. On the photographer, you want to go ahead and create a brand new keyframe on the scale at the very beginning, and that's gonna be set to 100. Scroll towards the end, and you want to increase the scale to around 115%. Now we'll make sure that keyframe is moved to the very end of that sequence. Now we need to go ahead and do the same thing for the background layer. So you want to go towards the end of the image sequence, create a brand new keyframe for 100%, then scroll back to the very beginning and you want to increase the scale to around 115. And now if you play back those two images at the same time, you can now see that the 2DR parallax effect is now complete. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please do let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe push that bell icon and I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. See you there.